Hello, everyone. Welcome to Built and Deployed. My name is Sonali Malik. I'm a cloud architect with Oracle Cloud Engineering team. Today, we are talking to Preetham Jay Pariyar from Doyensis about how they helped Mutual Materials migrate their Oracle eBusiness Suite workloads on Oracle Cloud. Preetham, welcome. Thanks for being here. Can you tell us a little about Mutual Materials and the project Doyensis completed for them? Mutual Material is uh, the largest supplier of masonry and hardscape products headquartered in Seattle. Uh, it's a major regional employer in the Pacific uh, Northwest, and its areas of operations are mining, manufacturing, transportation, uh, sales, and retail stores. Uh, they, there are 11 manufacturing sites in 18 locations and two mining uh, locations. Doensis is a management and technology consulting company. We are 15 years old, headquartered out of Dallas, Texas. We provide uh, customers with digital transformation services, um, upgrades, implementations, and ma managed IT services. We are basically Oracle specialists, helping clients with, uh, with all areas of Oracle, whether it be it database management, enterprise applications, bolt-on Apex, or managed services. Let's jump into the architecture diagram that you and your team built for mutual materials on OCI and all the decisions behind this design. So when you look at the original architecture, uh, you will see that mutual material were using Oracle EBS applications on one machine and the database on another. Uh, this was for the on-prem data center. For the migration to the cloud OCI, mutual material set us uh, some key criteria for our project. Number one, carry over the same design to the cloud. It was basically a lift and shift, no major changes. Second, uh, utilize the default failover. Third, take care of availability. Fourth, scalability. And the fifth, all the great security of OCI had to be considered. So if you look at the diagram, we have three availability zones. Availability zone one, on the right is the production compartment. AD2 on the left is the non-prod compartment comprising of both dev and test environments. And AD3 that you see in the middle is the disaster recovery compartment. Our design studio team did a fabulous job in adopting the, that article has to offer. And I would like to highlight three key components in the design. Number one, network. Number two, compute. And number three, load balancing. And let's go into a little bit of details on these three. Take a look at the prod compartment on the right. From a network angle, we designed separate subnets, one for the applications and one for the database, and one for the load balancers. There is a separate set of subnets for the non-prod and uh, production environment. For all the server services have been designed, to run on a secondary virtual network interface card, that is the VNIC. And from the compute angle, we designed to have the database and application nodes in two different virtual machines and both on different fault domains, different set of block volumes has been allocated for the database and applications. Can you walk us through all the features around scalability and resiliency for database and application tiers for EBS? So we took advantage of the Oracle Cloud scalability and resiliency strands on the IAS for this project, because that is what the business needed. And as mentioned, Oracle EBS database is configured in the fault domain one, and application has been configured in the fault domain two. So this gives us the ability to bring back services in an alternate available server. So from business continuity point of view, we designed to have disaster recovery in a different availability zone. The same thing applies to scalability, where OCI offers online resizing of storage uh, for its customers. 
I can see there are two load balancers, a public load balancer and a private load balancer. Can you talk about that and its security aspects with us? Yes, so when we designed the network, we applied the mutual material security policy because that was a key criteria for the project. We had to adhere to the policy guidelines of mutual material. It was critical for the business to restrict end user access from within the mutual material network. So what we did was we configured the Oracle EBS with private load balancer for end users and created a public load balancer for Oracle EBS integration uh, with other applications. We then configured the public load balancer and restricted the HTTP method to post method in order to enforce security and connectivity using REST API. I can see that eBusiness Suite application is also integrated with Oracle Sales Cloud and Oracle Transportation Management. Can you give us high level picture of how eBusiness Suite is integrated with other SaaS applications of Oracle in your architecture and your overall experience of building this integration? So that's a great question. So integration with external application was one of the key requirements for this project. And as all of us know, without external integration, you, you just cannot enable uh, your enterprise applications. Um, so that was certainly a key criteria. So we integrated the Oracle EBS application with Oracle Sales Cloud and Oracle Transport Management. They were already the existing applications with uh, mutual material. And the business need was to make the application URL publicly accessible. So end users access were restricted only to the mutual material networks. Uh, we faced a challenge in allowing access to Oracle Sales Cloud and Oracle Transportation Management. And we had a very uh, good solution and a creative solution for this. We resolved this by taking advantage of the OCI load balancer method level restrictions. We configured the public load balancer and restricted the HTTP method to post only in order to establish secure connectivity. And for the application end users, we configured private load balancers and allowed them access to end users uh, to the private load balancers. How was your overall experience of migrating eBusiness Suite workload from on-premise to Oracle Cloud infrastructure? Well, it was certainly very great. It was very smooth and seamless. I would say there is a saying, if you didn't have any project hiccups, it's not really a software project. In this case, we manage the project risks and challenges very, very gracefully. One of the very good executive projects that our team did. There was good support from Mutual Material in establishing the network uh, from on-prem to OCI. The Mutual Material team understood the architecture and provided us the clarity in changes to be implemented based on the business needs. Uh, during testing, the Mutual Material team brought our attention on the key business uh, requirement, uh, which we took care of in the project. We designed the architecture and networks in OCI, created and migrated non-production environments. We had assessed the risks and challenges ahead of the time and took required steps for mitigation during the user acceptance testing. That obviously is a key phase in the overall uh, project cycle. Um, and not to mention, we certainly received great su support from your team, that is the Oracle team, in particular the Oracle account team for, the, uh, for mutual material. Overall, with a great collaborative team effort, the migration was completed on time, on budget, and on schedule. All in all, we are very proud to have a happy and delighted customer in mutual material. Uh, Guy DeFlario, the CTO at MM, has been a great coach and a great champion for us. This was certainly a project very well executed. And as a technology, OCI has proven yet again that when it comes to application and data performance, Oracle Cloud is the most powerful engine to drive in the cloud. Thank you so much, Freetham. It was a pleasure to talk to you.
Thank you all for joining us today on Built and Deployed. Please tune in again for more technical conversations with our customers. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Amalia.